Philip. Thanks for your time. Hello, Chris. Nice to meet you. First of all, I have to ask the inevitable question. How the idea for Tribes of Europa came to you? <laughs> uh, it was actually um, the first Brexit referendum in 2016, you know, where uh, uh, the Britons voted to leave the European Union uh, in Europe. And that was a huge uh, thing in Europe. Uh, and I am a very pro-European European Union uh, guy. And I was very shocked um, by that. And I wanted immediately to do a, a, a TV show about the end of Europe. Uh, and I sat down and then obviously it didn't become a very political show, but uh, a show that was uh, larger than uh, life really on the uh, entertainment side 40 years after such a, a catastrophe. Tribe is a great show with great political discussion, as you said. And I saw that you don't like to say the show is just a dystopia. Why is that? Uh, because it's a world... Um, <clears throat> that takes place 40 years after a big catastrophe. And uh, it's a situation like in the Wild West where uh, there's also the hope of a new beginning. For me, this is a show about a new beginning of Europe with a new name, Europa. Um, and you have all kinds of different tribes and some are dystopian, like the crows obviously are rather dystopic, um, but you have the Crimson Republic uh, who are sort of the good guys, uh, at least in the beginning, as it seems, or You have the Origines, who are a very utopian tribe. Um, and there, as we insinuate, there are a lot of other uh, tribes on this continent also uh, to explore. And uh, there are um, very a lot of different systems, political systems and beliefs and identities there. And however the show may hopefully develop, um, we can see all kinds of uh, different Uh, extension extent of uh, all these uh, systems so it's, it's a mixture of utopia and dystopia it's pretty uh, for that what well, is sort of a realistic uh, thing so to say a little bit of this and a little bit of that <laughs> in dezember 29 fing auf einmal an die technisierte welt durchzudrehen Batsch. licht aus und finsternis das war's dann mittelalter Again, the tribes of the continent, Europa. And baden in the blood, um the forerschaft to erring. The world da draußen is not die unsere. We dachten, we könnten für immer in Frieden leben. Egal was passiert, und wir drei bleiben immer zusammen. Aber wir lagen falsch. What is it? Let's never fall into the wrong hands. Dir fehlt ein Cube vor deine Füße. Und du greifst nicht zu. Do you have any favorite scene or a favorite moment in the show? There are a couple ones. In, in episode six, uh, which is my favorite episode, there is... Um, The fight against the father, obviously, uh, emotionally for me, my favorite uh, scene. Um, very dark, obviously, very painful to watch Emilio Zakaria uh, uh, do this and um, and then become a, a crow bozy. Uh, and on the bright side, on the other side, I really much like um, the end with um, with Elia and Moses when um, the entrance to the Ark uh, comes out of uh, the water. Uh, and uh, they enter it and then uh, they vanish into a different uh, mysterious uh, land at the end. <laughs> I don't know if this is a difficult question, but what tribe from the first season would you like to be in? Um, I think for me, it's uh, the Crimson Republic, I'd say. But the Crimson Republic uh, with uh, under James Faulkner's um, character not uh, David, uh, David Foss, because he doesn't seem to have so good things in mind for the Crimsons. But as a pro-European guy, for me, under Father Cameron, the soldiers who fight for uh, a European idea, what, what Europe or the European Union is meant to be nowadays also, yes, they do it with the, with the weapons. Uh, and that's sort of what you have to do. But that's for me, the reason why, and I think it's important to kind of fight for what you believe in. And uh, that's why I would personally choose, choose the Crimson Republic, I'd say. 
how did you receive the enthusiastic comments for about tribes of Europa for other countries? Yeah, obviously that was um, just an immense joy for, for myself. I've been working on this project for three years now, and it was a, a, like a very long uh, journey that we took and not, not so easy uh, all the time. And to see um, Netflix uh, giving it the possibility to put it out there in so many countries around the world and getting messages on Instagram from all parts of the world, especially like the Brazil You're yeah. the best fans in the world. You really love the show. And I'm so, so happy. Actually, I'm very happy because I have also roots in Brazil. My, uh, my grandfather uh, used to live there for a couple of years with his whole family. They emigrated uh, near mm -hmm. Curitiba. So um, oh. I'm personally very happy that, um, that uh, the Brazilians um, shout out to all these amazing fans I like the show so much. We are very enthusiastic here. And you have to come to Comic Con here in Brazil, I guess just in 2022, but you have to come. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to. Yeah. Wo ist mein Cube? Die Tribes kämpfen erbarmungslos um die Vorherrschaft in Europa. Und wir sind jetzt mittendrin. We don't know what it is, but it's a threat to all mankind. What is more attractive in dystopians and sci-fi stories, in your personal opinion? Um, for me, like in the dystopian shows, and especially post-apocalyptic, I think is really something very cathartic um, that uh, that we that we want as a society. It always it al always reflects where we stand, um, uh, where we stand right now. And we have a lot of problems, obviously, in the real world right now. And then I, that's because that's why I think um, uh, these uh, a kind of shows really yearn for a reset. We want change in this world. Mm -hmm. We want to start something new. We want to make uh, something better out of it, uh, and these genres, which is so uh, like so so big in the world, uh, is really a statement, actually, I think, or at least a mirror uh, to that uh, desire to have like a reset and to change something for the better. I think the end of the Europe for you is just like we imagine the end of the America here. And I think this is a sad and real feeling for every human on earth. We need to destroy, to reconstruct, and this is a, a big cycle. What do you think about this identification of us here in America with your story? Yeah, I, th I think at the end, um, it is really a universal thing. I mean, uh, it started out as uh, Euro Europe and the Brexit being the one of the first signs that Europe is falling apart, so to say, or fear. And, but, but the separatism is something, is a phenomenon that we see all over, all over the world. Of course, also in, 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 in Brazil and in Latin America, we see it in, in North America, in the US, uh, we see it a lot. So I think it's really, um, it is really like a consequence of, of globalism. I think it's a consequence of radical capitalism Uh, and, and, and neoliberalism that has also done a lot of harm um, because it, it's not um, controlled enough. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it, it will reach or has already reached a point where we really need to kind of uh, have that reset. And, and I think that, um, yeah, the show is basically like a mirror of what's happening in all or in many parts of, um, of, of the world uh, right now. And it strikes a fear, obviously, Uh, that something like this uh, could happen. That's, that's why for me, it was very important to not um, focus on, okay, it's going down, um, but um, we are 40 years after, we have it now, and we have the chance to do something better. So it's basically after the reset, because it would be too dark. I mean, the show is already dark, but it would have been too dark if we go into, okay, it's falling apart right now. I love stories that came with a political and humanitarian context that try to be part of our change and of our, and of our future. So thank you for creating this story to our reflection and mostly for our growth. To finish, could you please send one personal message for a whole world that 
love your story and love your point of view? Um, yeah, for, first of all, I thank you very, very much for, uh, for watching the show, for liking it and for spreading the word uh, out there and recommend others to uh, watch because then we maybe can do a, a, a second season uh, if we're lucky and enough people will uh, watch uh, Fingers uh, Across. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think it's about, um, it's about hope. And I think it's about, we have to fight for what is good in the world. Uh, that is for me one of the most important message. If we do not do anything, then um, the evil forces, uh, I think, will always win. Um, the light and the, uh, and the good in the world is something that we really need to fight for. We cannot just sit, uh, uh, sit down and do nothing and, and watch. It is really time uh, to act. Uh, and I think and I hope that uh, the show can do a little bit of a message to uh, get the people out there and uh, yeah, that it, see that it's necessary to do something. Yeah, thanks for your time. Thanks for the show. I think we all here in Brazil and in the whole world, we want to see season two, but we want to see your stories and your point of view because you are a, a great creator of uh, our topic world. So thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you, Brazil. Thank you. Bye bye. The rest goes with us. Where did you take them? Where? You will never see them again. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> Meine Familie ist irgendwo da draußen. Wenn du leben willst, steig ein. Gibt's hier irgendeinen Weg raus? You're my property, Tian. My new toy. I want to be free. Only death frees us. I'd do anything to get my family back. Auch wenn das dann ein Tod bedeutet. The big threat is coming to Europa. We can stop it. Ja. Manchmal braucht es eine ungeheuerliche Tat, um den Lauf der Geschichte wieder in die richtige Bahn zu lenken.